Cal Francis Liz from SimpleItalianCookie.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. Really excited to talk about the Breville Smart Oven 900 BSS today. Something I've been wanting to do for a while. But before I get started, if you like these type of videos, and especially if you like Italian cooking, then please make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you get notified when we get these videos out. And we want to make sure that you get notified of them. And if you do end up enjoying uh, this video, please make sure to give it a like thumbs up because it just two reasons. One, it helps spread the word. And secondly, uh, it lets me know that, hey, I'm on the right track uh, and I'm giving you guys what, what you want. All right. So we are going to talk about this lovely uh, smart toaster oven, which I am very excited to talk about. We bought this back about five months ago and it cost us approximately $300. And before you say, whoa, that is way too much for a toaster oven, you got to hear me out because that was my reaction too uh, when my husband pointed this particular one out. I was satisfied just getting a little Hamilton uh, just to replace the toaster oven that we had before. That was fine. But I am very, very glad that we chose this one. And I will tell you why. Um, and I'm going to go over some of the things that were of concern to me when choosing a toaster oven. And if I had concerns about it, maybe you do too. So another thing, I am not getting paid for this. This is informational purposes only. I may put an affiliate link down to Amazon and that's it. But I am not getting paid. Breville has not contacted me or anything like that. So first off, let's talk about the size and the weight of this and overall dimensions because this is not small. To give some perspective, here is a Keurig, so you can see the size comparison between a regular Keurig and this, the Breville toaster oven. And to give more comparison, this is just a basic four slicer toaster oven. So you can, you can see that this is quite a bit larger, but it can do quite a bit more. And I'm going to tell you, one of the most exciting things for me is we barely use this anymore. This is sucks up the electricity just when we want to cook something basic. This basically replaces our oven. The only time we use the oven is when this is in use and we need to cook something or if it's something that just doesn't fit in here. And I'm going to get into that. Okay, before I plug this in, you might be wondering why I don't have it plugged in. There's a reason. I wanted to talk about the length of the cord. The cord is about four feet. This is really important because we all know how many times do we get an appliance we're excited about. And this is one of the problems we had with the last toaster oven. The cord was so small that it really gave us very little flexibility. So this is about four feet long. I measured it this morning. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. It also has the type of uh, plug that goes at an angle, which is also really convenient and it's flat here. So it goes right in, it doesn't stick out real far. That for me is a big deal. So I have this pulled out from the back uh, just so that we can get a little closer view of it. Um, the overall size dimensions, I always gotta look because I'm terrible with numbers, 21 and a half inches this way, okay? Depth wise, is 17 inches, technically 17.1 according to their manual. And this way, height wise, it is 12 and a half inches. And I measured it and, um, and that is accurate. When you unbox it, by the way, it came in very nicely boxed. So it is fairly easy. Um, I'm not sure how much this weighs. I'll look it up and let you know. I was able to carry it from where we normally have it, which is in another um, room on a wire rack. But I was able to carry it a little clunky, but um, not impossible. Definitely lighter than a um, KitchenAid stand mixer. So for those of you who have that, you can uh, be able to tell. All right. So since we're talking about the size, I want to go and show you exactly how big it actually is. When we read these things on Amazon or at their website and we hear the dimensions, it's really hard to understand like, well, how practical is that going to be for me? Because we hear about how big it is and it's so great and you can put a turkey in it and this and that and a chicken and 
well, let's just see how big it really is. So um, I've been pleasantly surprised and I'm gonna show you. Okay, we have here uh, a uh, 12 muffin tin for cupcakes. And this is about 13 and three quarters by 10 and a half, I think is what I measured. And there is lots of room. No problem at all. 13 by 9 stainless steel pan. Fits, no problem at all. So your 13 by 9 pans, they'll work. This is a 12 and a half pizza pan, stainless steel. No problem. Comes with a almost 13, uh, 13 inch pan, uh, pizza pan of their own. No problem, plenty of room. I'm gonna talk about how it works with the pizza too, it's pretty cool. Yes, so this is a 16 by 12 pan. It's a little tight, fits no problem. And I've used this to actually make pizzas on. So it does hold a lot. Obviously it will hold a chicken in here um, and it says up to a 14 pound turkey. So I don't know if I have a 14 pound turkey. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about are the features on here. So um, we were really used to push buttons uh, with our Hamilton that we had before. And I don't mind the knobs. My husband did not want knobs at all. So that's one of the compromises. And uh, right away, his attitude changed about it. And he loved the, loves the knobs. Um, the knobs are really, really nice because as you turn them, it will show the adjustments up here. And I got to go over the adjustments and the different settings that it has because it's, it's pretty cool. Um, first one is toast. And what you do is you just simply turn this top knob and you can adjust the darkness. It'll say here darkness uh, of it. So if you want it really light, you turn it this way and you can see the little arrow and you turn it this way and it gets really dark. So that's really great, but what about if you have one piece of toast or whether you're putting in nine slices of toast? Very easy. This bottom knob, you actually adjust and set it for the number of pieces of toast that you have in there and because um, it all has all this technology, you can adjust it. So if you have nine slices, which is as high as it'll go, because uh, that's as much as you can fit, it will automatically adjust. Now, uh, the timing versus if you have four slices, um, but what if you have four slices and you want it, I come along and I don't like mine really dark, I just simply move it down and when you hit the start button, it actually counts down and tells you how long you have. And that's more something you get with baking, not necessarily with toasting, at least with the oven, toaster ovens that we've used in the past. So this is really cool. And in fact, if I change my mind and I say, you know what? I do want it really dark. I turn it up and it automatically adjusts the time. Another feature that I really like, and I know this might sound really trivial for some people, uh, and, and some people may not like this, uh, but I love it and I really, really appreciate it and I'll explain why. When I pull this out, and this is on a toaster rack, okay, so there are different settings for different rack positions and they label it on the glass which is really nice because i'm not going to remember what rack position goes for what purpose so this is happens to be on toast right now when i pull this out there's a little magnet here and here on the door and what that does is that pulls the rack out slightly just enough so that i can easily grab my toast okay and without burning myself or having to reach far back or just being able to get a um, pot holder and pull it out further if I need to. This has been really handy. I really, really like this. Okay, so another feature that I really like about this, and again, this is one of those things you don't think about until you actually get a toaster oven, uh, and that is that the grooves for the rack 
are, are constant. It's, there's a constant groove all the way back here and here. So I never have to worry about pulling the rack out too far and then having it slip off the back, um, off the back groove and having it tilt outward. Now, I've seen toaster oven reviews on Amazon where people have shown pictures of their models, um, not this one, not, I don't, it wasn't, I don't think it was a Breville, uh, but just showing that this is like not a good thing. And so that was, was something that I looked for and the Breville has that, there is a groove that goes all the way back. On top of that, they even do, a, they even have a little safety um, notch here. I guess you could call it a safety guard um, that, see that? It stopped me from pulling it all the way out. There's like a little hook on each rack, on each groove, so that I can't accidentally pull it out and drop my dish or my toast or whatever it is that I'm cooking. Um, so I really, really appreciate that. It's on one side, not on both. The other feature, uh, one of the other settings is for baking. What I really like about the baking uh, functionality that Breville did is when you open the oven door to check it, the timer actually stops and it pauses until you close it back up again. So I know that for my regular oven, obviously it doesn't do that. I'm cooking something, I open it for 30 seconds, however long it may be, I have to close it again uh, and then maybe adjust the timer that I have set because I stop the cooking, the baking process, uh, Breville takes care of that for you. The other thing too is with, one thing that it talks about is even baking um, and even toast. I'm gonna say that's uh, not exactly accurate. Um, so I did a test where I had some toast and a bagel or whatever and I put it in and it really did not brown perfectly all the way around. So I do think that that's probably just common with any type of toaster oven. Um, I've yet to have you in an oven or anything that actually truly does it well. Okay, let's actually talk about the different parts of uh, the different functions that they have. So what they have is uh, you start here at the top and they have toast, bagel, broil, bake, roast, warm, pizza, proof, air fry, reheat, cookies, slow cook, and dehydrate, okay? Have I tried all of these? No, I'm just being honest. Toast, bagel. Let's talk about the bagel setting. So the bagel setting, I love because I eat bagels, and I've never been able to use my previous toaster oven to cook a bagel because it just dries it out too much. This one does not do that. When you have it on the bagel setting, it actually really does cook the bagel really well where it keeps it soft, but still gives that little bit of crunch on the top surface. So that one is definitely a big plus. Uh, broil, I've never, I don't think I've used broil on this one. I mean, broil is broil. Um, baking, okay. So baking, yeah, it's, we've, I just baked a bunch of uh, sweet potatoes last night in this. So it does great. Okay, so let's now talk about the pizza function because we love pizzas in this house. And I wanna talk about one of the really cool things that I didn't even know existed until we actually started using it. And that is, it has a rotate function. What that means is when you're cooking the pizza, sometimes the back will get more cooked than the front, just simply because there's more heat in the back or air might escape, whatever it may, whatever the reason. So what it does halfway through the cooking cycle of the pizza, it will actually start beeping and you go over and you turn it. You'll see a little thing that pops up and it says rotate, rotate. And you just, it's a reminder to rotate the pizza halfway through, shut the door and it continues on with it baking the pizza. So that part, I, that I think is really cool. Uh, proofing. So we also like to bake our own breads and Proofing really does work. So proofing is when you want something to rise. So whether it's a pizza dough, whether you're making homemade rolls or a homemade Italian bread, whatever it may be, you can put it in, you can put the, when the dough needs to rise, we've done both sourdough and yeast, uh, and you just simply put it in, you, you put it on the proofing uh, selection here, 
It sets it at a very low temperature. It sets it by default for two hours. You definitely don't need to do it for two hours. It's however long it takes. So if you're using a pizza dough, uh, then you know maybe it'll only take 30 minutes. If you're using something else, like sourdough takes longer to rise. So in that case, it might be two hours. It might be longer than two hours. We've done it both and we have made really delicious breads um, and things using the proof cycle. So the proof cycle will keep it at that low temperature. I don't have to use this oven anymore if I don't want to. Air fry. Let's talk about air frying. So the only thing that we've really air fried, so we're not big into chicken wings and stuff like that, although I do love them, but with the price of meat and everything, I'm just not going to go out and buy a bunch of stuff like that right now. Uh, so what we have used the air fryer for is we had some dough and uh, we made little balls and we put them in the air fryer basket and we put it in and we air fried it and they puffed up and we had delicious rolls made with the air fryer. So would we have gotten the same thing if we had just hit bake? Maybe, but the air fryer did it really fast and it made it nice and crunchy on the outside and the inside was beautiful. Um, reheat, I've done reheat, just simple. Puts it at 325, and then you just adjust the time for whatever you want. If you want to adjust the, if you want to turn down the, uh, the temperature, you can do that manually. Uh, cookies, has a setting for cookies. Don't forget to use the cookie rack, which is number five. And then they have a slow cook. And the slow cook can either go, and so this is kind of cool with the slow cook. So the slow cook setting is either set to high or low, and you can adjust the time. Dehydrate. So dehydrate, I think this is actually really cool. I haven't used the dehydrator functionality. I will, and I promise I'll, I'll post a video on it. We have a big old high dehydrator, so I just never need to use this. And in order to use this for the dehydrating, so this is something to consider, okay? If you think it's really cool that they have a dehydrator functionality and that you're going to use it all the time, just remember that when you're dehydrating things, it takes sometimes eight hours, 10 hours, to dehydrate different herbs, vegetables, fruits, whatever it is that you're dehydrating. So while this is being used for dehydrating, you can't use it for anything else. So that's been a hold back um, for me for being able to use this. Fortunately, we have a separate dehydrator. And so I just use that. Um, in order for me to use this, I'd have to do this overnight. And I don't want this really, I just don't like using appliances and having them run um, and be on overnight um, when I'm not around to kind of monitor. That is you know, something that's, hey, they have a dehydrator. That's so cool. Now I can do my herbs. Great. Just keep in mind that when you're doing this, you're not going to be able to use it for anything else. So if this really replaces that and you're using it and you do a lot of cooking and baking, uh, you're going to have to really kind of plan around that dehydrating. So the other thing that I want to talk about is the convection functionality. So our bit the dust um, only had regular convection. This one has two different convection ones. So you really have three settings. You have regular bake, okay? You're gonna cook something at 350, it's 350. If you're gonna cook something at convection, it will automatically decrease the temperature to 325 because it knows that when you do convection, you actually cook it at a lower temperature because the convection functionality will increase the temperature. So you actually reduce the setting of what it is. So let me just show you here. Uh, let's go ahead and put this on bake. And we'll go to 350. Okay. So I have it set to 350. I don't have convection on. Now I'm going to hit the convection button and it reduces it to 325. And if I hit super convection, it's gonna reduce it another 10 degrees to, it will reduce it 10 more degrees to 315, okay? So that's really cool. So it's got the two different convections, plus you can do it with no convection at all. So the other thing that I think is nice is um, I like their light. It's just easy to get to uh, and it stays on for a decent amount of time and it really, truly lights up the inside so that I can see what's cooking and what the status is. So I really, really do like that. So good job, and then you can just turn it off. They also have a frozen feature here. So if you have something that is already frozen um, and it 
the smart oven will know how to properly cook it and take in account the fact that it is already frozen. Now, if you know with a lot of my recipes, if you happen to follow the channel or follow my website, you know that a lot of times I will say if something's frozen like stuffed shells, it's best to let it thaw uh, in the fridge overnight. But if you don't have that option, maybe it's last minute, you could always use the frozen. So let's talk about what's actually included when you get your Breville. What does it actually come with? So I'm showing mine with one rack, but it actually comes with two. Okay, so it comes with two racks. So besides the two racks, you also have the 13 inch pizza pan. You've got a nine by 13 inch broil rack and enamel roasting pan. And you have the mesh basket, which is used for the air frying and for the dehydrating. And of course, the drip tray and the manual. Now, let me explain the racks. The racks can either go in this way or they can go in this way. And depending on what it is that you're actually baking and using the rack, each rack position has an up or a facing down indicator. So for instance, if I want to make, uh, so the rack position that I have here is set for bake. But if I want to bake cookies, so like to be for baking, like for a roast, a chicken, what have you. But if say you wanted to do some cookies, you wanted to bake cookies, it actually tells you to do this. Flip it over so it raises it just a little bit. And now it is facing up and you are ready to go ahead and do your cookies. So your top one can go up or down. That's if it's on broil. Uh, position number three is facing up, and that would be for air frying or dehydrating. Then you have your toast and bagel, okay? Then you have your cookies and your bake, roast, and then your pizza goes on the bottom here by facing up. Then you also have your slow cook. Okay, so that is about the racks. In terms of cleaning this, um, so one of the complaints that some people talk about is the fact that, hey, this does get really dirty, especially when you're doing the air frying or you're doing a lot of chickens and baking with meats, there's splatter and all that kind of stuff. Um, friends, you're going to get that no matter what oven uh, you get. So splatter is splatter. Even in this large oven, when I cook a turkey or I cook a chicken, unless I have it covered, um, it's going to splatter. I put things down on it uh, to prevent the splatter from getting to the very bottom, and but it makes a mess. So it's no surprise that this is going to also make a mess. People do have advice on how to clean it. This tray here will get dirty when you have that splatter and the grease and the oil drips. Again, you're going to get that no matter what. Very easy to remove, very nice size, and it does. It collects the, uh, for us, a lot of toast or bread crumbs that fall or cheese if we're doing a pizza and it's very easy to um, insert and remove. It has a nice little grip bar here. Uh, another little feature for those who prefer to monitor in Celsius, you can adjust Celsius here. Another thing that's really nice is I really like the door. It's easy to leave it partially open, which is really nice because when you're baking something and you you turn it off, it stops baking, but you're not ready to take it out yet. Maybe you just need like three minutes, five minutes because you're cleaning up some other stuff. You can open it and you don't have to leave it all the way down where people are going to walk into it. In fact, you can just leave it and it'll stay right there. And it has another little notch um, where it will stop and then you can close it all the way. So I really hope that this video has been helpful for you and hopefully this puts your mind at ease. Um, I can tell you that, um, as I stated in the beginning, you know, this was this almost cost us this cost us about three hundred dollars. But I'm not using this big thing that costs us a lot in electricity. I mean, ovens suck up a lot of energy, and I we rarely have to use that. So this for three hundred dollars, basically replacing this, replacing the old toaster oven. I don't even use the four slice toaster, uh, regular toaster. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you did find it informative and make sure to subscribe because I'll be talking about other products too moving forward. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and let me know your own comments down below. Grazie, ciao.